Office Boy Builder here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are well. In this episode, I'm going to be working on this wall here that's behind me. So we've got a sofa here. I'm going to be shifting that out of the way. This LED strip runs the whole way along. I'm going to be evening that out a little bit. You'll see what I mean by that. And I'm going to be covering the entire thing in plywood. Uh, for those of you who don't already follow him, there is a phenomenal carpenter on YouTube called Scott Brown. And he's just excellent. Really, really very good. And actually, he's he was the inspiration for a couple of things on this build. So I'm going to be copying what he's done, doing this sort of uh, wall, a plywood wall, so you'll see that. But it was also in one of his videos that I saw this here, which is a bifolding window. I'd never seen one of those before until I saw it on his build on his channel. He was the inspiration for that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting on this tonight. We've moved the stuff away from the wall. That is fine there. It gives us lots of space. So I'm going to spin this round and I'll show you what it looks like, what we're going to be up to. So this wall was always left rough. We did a very loose rough kind of mist coat brian did that we left it and oh, sorry we, we we also have a new little visitor to the channel who may yeah this is rosie she may end up coming to help us a couple of times what we're going to be doing is I'm, i've designed out a kind of repeating pattern of different sizes of plywood and it's all stacked up over there, mostly pre-cut, but not completely pre-cut. That is what we're going to be sticking up on the wall. And it's going to come just above where that line of LED is, that strip, so that all you're left with is, is the light. You'll, you'll see what it looks like at the end of the video if you stick around. But yeah, we're going to get started on this now. I know that a few of you guys uh, of my subscribers really don't like it when I show all my maths and my thinking or, or don't really follow it. And I completely understand that because actually a lot of the time that I'm doing stuff, I do it by eye. But in this instance, I did have to work out the widths and, and I did it by working out the width of the wall and, and the height of the wall and then the width of the boards and the amount of kittens that I needed to use in order to, you know, cover the distance and I was very very fortunate actually when I went to Wix to start looking at something else I, I noticed that they had pre-cut short boards and they just happened to be the exact right width that means I'm barely going to need to cut down any of the lengths which is basically just extraordinary in some instances I'm going to have to cut some of these in half that's obviously not proportionally correct that's going to be in half there but in most cases i'll have a long one and then these will be effectively half of these i think it works out to be i, I need to check I, I i can't fully remember but this is effectively the repeating pattern that i've designed that i'm going to draw up and yeah i, I actually i think it would look quite nice i'm deliberately leaving a nice big gap in between which i'll been be spray painting black what I think I am going to do is spend a little bit of time just, just looking at it and laying it out and kind of holding things up. But also what I think I might do is effectively make some spaces. I, I have some bits that are you know, 11 or 12 mil wide, which is what the gaps are going to be. I think I'm going to make some spaces that I can effectively put in there as wedges for these to sit on and to then to space these off and hold, hold them out of the way. And that way it gives it a nice uniform distance to kind of, you know, make sure it's super even. What do you think, Rosie? Is that a good, good plan? That's a wink. Sounds good to me. So this is one of the first boards that I'm going to be putting up. I've just been cleaning up a few patches, so that's why that's there. I've trimmed the end there with the multi-cutter. And now I've measured and marked. So that board is exactly 1829 tall, which is perfect. So now I'm going to cut this to 399. I'll have an 11mm gap 
and that will sit just up there. So you'll, you'll see me doing that. The way that I'm cutting this, and this, this actually you can kind of see these big cathedral lines, these cathedral rings, that's exactly what I want. And when we've put some varnish on it or Osmo oil, they really pop and stand out very, very nicely. So that's what I'm, that's what, that's why I want it. I'm going to be using a track saw and this precision kind of tr rail system. Very, very common. It's really, really good. I bought it from Lawson HIS. I think I mentioned it either in another video or if not, I'll quickly put the, the clip in here of just how quickly it arrived. The service from Lawson was exemplary. Really, really good. So I was super chuffed with that. I'm sitting it on some bench cookies, which are these here. It just helps keep it off the ground. Three here to stabilize and one to catch this end so it doesn't bend and, and break. I'll put the rail across and, and cut it. And I do have a Bosch Hoover that fits to the attachment, but it's stored in the garage and I can't be bothered to get it. So I'm gonna work with my wife um, to get this cut on here. I have a pin nailer, which is utterly useless. It is just awful and I don't want to use it. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to sink a whole load of polymer adhesive on this. There is a really great video on YouTube done by Robin Clevitt, the other guru of carpentry on YouTube, talking about different adhesives and the ones that are best and which are not so great. And so I've basically followed that video and I would encourage you to do the same. I will post a link to that below in the comments. I have bought one of these. This is Everbuild. You may remember Everbuild. They're the guys that make the PVA, uh, the polyurethane glue that I've been using. Everbuild are fantastic, but this multi-stick is a polymer adhesive, which is very, very good, very strong. This is what I'm going to be using. Right, so that's the first one done and on. I had to get the crappy nailer. Uh, I'm not going to be showing the brand name for especially long, because I don't want to get sued. But it's really not great. But it was 30 quid from Tool Station or Screwfix, somewhere, it doesn't really matter where. It was cheap and I, you well, you get what you pay for. Yeah, you're absolutely right but I didn't have the budget for a more expensive one. I saved the money on an expensive pin nailer and I bought that and I would make that trade every day of the week because you don't want to be having furry lines when you cut them. So that's first one on. I just need to put the next one up here, drill the hole and we can carry on with the next one. I probably will set you up on a time lapse, but it's getting darker and darker. So you may not be able to see stuff. If that's the case, I do apologize. I know you guys prefer it when I film myself doing the work, but it really depends on the light.
Right, it is the next morning. My battery died last night and it was so late. I didn't get to bed until about half past 12 last night because I wanted to finish this. The light was completely gone so you wouldn't have been able to see anything anyway. But that is pretty much what it looks like, which is really nice. I have now got the masking tape out and a very sharp blade and I'm going along and I'm getting this right up against the edges, nice and firm to make sure there's no bleed through. And what I'm going to do is I'm then going to get the spray paint and I'll spray at an angle this way and this way. I'll probably clean up in here as well. There's just a little bit of that polymer adhesive in there. So I'll clean that out first. So I'm quite excited to see what this looks like. I'm going to set you up on a time lapse and just so you can see the process. I'm going to pull all of this away again now and uh, you'll follow along and see how it comes out. Sorry about the, well I'm not sorry about the light, but the shadows that it's casting makes it a little bit tricky. It took about an hour and 20 minutes. And what I've done is I've just gone along and I have put tape up here behind each one, like this, just to protect the wall at the back there where the gap is. There's tape down the sides here of the wall so that this side shadow can get done nice and easily. Everything is on. I'm just going to go around and have one final press because what you don't want is there to be a little bit of lift behind the tape and then it bleeds through. So just going to go along and just press all of the edges down and make sure that there isn't anything, any lift. So we don't have any creep or anything like that. And once that is done, I am in a good position to open all the doors. I've got the windows open. I'll open up all of the doors and I will start spray painting. It is a solvent free, I'm pretty sure I picked a solvent free uh, paint, but I will just double check and I'll see. So I have done a little test. Uh, this is not solvent free paint, it wasn't even close. Super solventy. I actually got wood stove paint. This was the only black spray paint they had in Wix when I went there. So I have done it as a tester. So I, I had a leftover strip, I've cut it down and I've put this on here. It says it's one hour to touch dry, but what I want to do is I just want to take this off and just see if there's any bleed through, just to see how it looks. Yeah, see there is a bit. So you have to be quite careful with that. Hmm. Interesting. Gonna have to do another tester and see. So step two of my test was to do another spray area. Some bits I deliberately pushed it down really firm, other bits I left a little bit loose. Now this is going with the grain, this is going across the grain or along the grain and across the grain. And you can see where it goes across the grain, it, it sucks in, the, the grain running this way pulls in and bleeds a lot more. I don't think there's anything that I can do to stop that versus here pushing down obviously works much better. What I've done, as I mentioned, is I've gone through and I have pushed the seams on every single one. And thankfully the grain runs up and down. So for the most part, it shouldn't be a problem, but there are obviously grain lines going across. Again, not a vast amount I can do for that, save for pushing this in really firm like this with my nail and hoping that it helps provide a little bit of protection. I'm kind of committed now and I don't, I don't overly mind. It, it, it's a natural thing, it's a natural product, it's a natural you know, material, it's gonna do what it's gonna do. There's, there's not a lot you can do for it, so I'm not going to spend ages agonizing over it. So I'm going to set you up on the time lapse. I've opened those there. I've opened those there. So there's a nice little through breeze coming along. I'm going to start spraying it now.
So as you know, this channel is called Office Boy Builder, not Office Boy Banksy. And, you know, with good reason, I am not that great with spray paint. I'm glad that I got the extra wide tape, this sort of width rather than the normal stuff because it goes everywhere. I would encourage you, if you're going to do this, have a can of acetone to hand. And this is expanding gun, uh, expanding foam gun cleaner, but it is effectively just acetone. I mean, it says it's specifically designed, formulated, blah, 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 but it, it's acetone. So that was really helpful. This floor here is completely cleaned up. And all I did is spray a little bit of the acetone down and use a baby wipe or a wet wipe or a kitchen roll. Worked fine. I'm going to be leaving this on. I'm going to let it dry. It, I've gone over it twice now. So I've done two, two coats. And I'm going to basically leave it to dry, see how it comes out. I have spray painted it and I've removed the masking tape. And you can see there's an amazing amount of kind of shade or shadow that has come up there and it's bled into the grain of the wood here. So I'm going to have to go over it with the sander, which is fine because birch ply sands up really nicely. Some bits where the tape basically it, it filled over and, and it built up and then ran down. From a distance, actually, I'm really happy with the look of it, but I do I want to get rid of that shadow. So I will be sanding it down. I'm not going to do that right now, but I will be sanding this and then varnishing it. I think if I were to do this again, I would possibly have worked out my distances and I would then have sprayed the wall and kind of given myself a bit of an extra margin and I would have taped up the edges and spray painted them outside. But there's nothing you could have done. Even if I'd sprayed this outside, you saw on my tester piece a moment ago, this still bled through. So it's not really anything to do with that. Maybe the different type of type of tape, maybe, you know, the blue scotch tape, American stuff. Who knows? I don't, I'm not sure, but I'll be sanding this down. I'll take it down. I'll go probably 80, 120, and then 180 grit. And then I will be filling in these little pin nailer holes, varnishing it. And that will be that done. I'll be touching up a bit of uh, white diamond mat just up there and on the edges. And then that's it, it's done. But most of the hard work is done. This will just be a case of taking it over with the Bosch, with the, uh, with the sander. And this is the finished article. So we've got the speakers wired in. We've got this light the whole way along. These are up. It's a shame because it's at night. It looks better at night. And I'm filming, but the glare from the kind of torch on my phone doesn't doesn't do it justice really. It's got a lovely soft warmth to it. Got the kind of sitting area here, like this. A couple of extra chairs and somewhere for the cats. So yeah, I hope you found this helpful, enjoyable. Thank you, Scott Brown. I doubt you'll ever see this, but thank you for the inspiration on this. Thoroughly enjoyed uh, doing it and learning from you on it. And I'm really pleased with how it's come out. So, uh, yeah, thank you for joining. If this is your first time watching, then thank you for, for joining us. If you're a regular, thanks again for all the support and for helping the channel to grow. So please do like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next video.